Hello, battery testers. Uh, now I won't be including this moving coil meter one in this video because I'm interested really only in these digital ones which are really just voltmeters because they don't put any significant load on your battery so you don't see the droop down under load you're just literally measuring the terminal voltage. So we have the BT168D, D for digital. Um, there is a BT168, oh yeah, this is the BT168, the analog one. Uh, this is the BT168 Pro. Now the only difference is that the 168 Pro, the slider comes further out so that you can do 18650s. We've got the BT189, uh, and then there's also this uh, Aneng 168 Mac. Now, I recently criticised the BT189 because it does something rather strange. If you take a measurement um, with a cell, it latches that measurement on the display so that even if that cell is now dropping in voltage, um, it doesn't show that on the display. And you can prove that. And if I put that up there, I can do this with a 9-volt battery. So if I put the 9-volt battery on the terminals down here, 9.5, then put the uh, 1.2 volt battery in. Okay, now take, <laughs> yes, it's difficult to do because the terminals on here are very difficult to hold on to. But I can now latch in that 9.51 volts using a 1.2 volt battery to power this device and it just sits there saying 9.51 volts. So that proves that it latches the voltage and I can do it the other way around. Um, if I put the 1.2 volt, 1.3 volt battery in, put the 9 volt on there and hold it on to provide power. So now I'm measuring a 9 volt battery and it's saying 1.3 volts. Now curiously you can, it's quite difficult on this one, in fact I won't even attempt it on that one. Uh, no, I have to do it on this one because at this point in the video, this is the only one that latches. But um, let's try and get these two connected at exactly the same time. And you get this very strange 10.26 volts, which looks a bit like the sum of the two voltages, which doesn't make a lot of sense because the two negative points are actually connected directly together. They're the same piece of metal. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, but yeah, you can get this bizarre uh, higher voltage. So now this 1.2 volt battery is measuring 10.26. So this is all fine. Um, for me, I want to use these things not as battery testers. I want to use them as volt monitors. So if I've got um, either supercapacitors or um, a battery made up of multiple cells, I can use these to show the individual voltages of all the cells. You have to have a lot of these and you have to sort of cut them up or add connectors or that sort of thing, which I've done before. The batteries in the shed um, have a, a row of uh, cut up. Which one did I cut up? I think it was the BT168 Pro actually. So in anticipation of needing more of these things in the future, I bought some more of these BT168Ds. I bought four. And that's turned out to be a mistake because these are latching. If I put that on there, 9.57, now I put my 1.5 volt battery in. Yes, if I can hold it all in place, which is not entirely easy. Oh, there goes that um, sum of the two voltages thing. But if I can hold that there, yeah, it's latched that voltage on the display. And this is a BT168D, but it's clearly different to this BT168D because this one doesn't latch. So how do you know if your battery tester has this latching action or not? Well, one thing I've found is if you first put the battery on, you get that initial zero volts. There it is, zero volts and then 1.28. That is an indication that this is a non-latching battery tester. And in fact, if I now add the nine volt battery, I think they're dioded into the supply and so all that it does is it overrides the 1.2 volt battery and takes the unit up to 9.5 volts. But clearly that 
is showing a live, well you saw it move there, a live voltage. So yeah, that indication of the initial zero, and I can show that on the nine volt battery as well, an initial zero, and then you get the voltage, and that voltage is live, and it moves. So what makes some of these battery testers uh, latch the voltage and some not latch it and show the voltage in real time? Well, let's focus on these two, the BT168D, the earlier one I bought, which uh, doesn't latch, and this new BT168D that doesn't have that blue flash, um, which does latch. Let's get these open and see what's going on inside. I want to open this one anyway, because for some reason it won't show anything for the 1.5 volt battery broken wire probably I mean this slider <laughs> after a few slides is going to break that wire isn't it let's get this open okay so inside here we have is that wire broken yes that wire's broken um so there's the circuit board um there is a small zebra strip running along there there are little pads on the back of the board and that goes down onto the bottom of this LCD. Okay, let's open the other one and see if there are any noticeable differences between the two. Okay, so here are the two boards. Now the top one is the latching uh, version, the bottom one is the non-latching. So a couple of capacitors, uh, a chip, this um, three-pin regulator-looking device, um diode there well let's go through this sequentially um the nine volts seems to go into a diode and then into this chip here it's the same in through the diode and into this chip so let's see what this chip is and um it's an ht30 now i'm guessing that is a three volt regulator is it the same on the other one Yes, HT30. So it looks like the 9 volts is, goes through a diode to prevent uh, polarity reversal and then goes through a 3 volt regulator. Now at some point, of course, it's measured. Uh, it does appear to go off over there. So it's probably measured over there somewhere. But yeah, that's the same circuit on the 9 volts. Okay, the 1.5 volts comes in here goes to an inductor. So my guess is that this is a boost converter because these things actually work down to about 0.5 volts. Um, so they're boosting that half a volt up to a usable voltage. Um, capacitors, and then there's this chip, this E33A. Let's take a look at the other one. Uh, is it the same chip? Can I get the light on it? Well, it looks like the same chip. It says E3, but this one says OU. But I'm guessing whatever this E3 chip, and I assume it's a boost converter. This one has um, an inductor also, but it's uh, one of these um, axial inductors, 101. So I'm guessing that's um, uh, 101. Is that 100 microhenries? So the two circuits are very similar. They regulate the nine volts down to three volts and take a measurement. They boost convert the 1.5 volts up to uh, something usable by this chip. But look at the chip itself. This one is 14 pin and this one is 16 pin. Now the 14 pin chip is on the latching voltmeter, I'm gonna call it, even though this is a battery tester, I'm interested in these from the point of view of their use as a voltmeter. So the latching one, which is no use to me, of course, because I want to see uh, voltage in real time, 14 pin chip, 16 pin chip, non-latching. Let's have a look in some of the other um, battery testers to see what chips they've got. So this is the Aneng 168 Max, where the 1.5 volt you stick between these two. And of course you've got uh, varying width there. 9 volt is done on these two connections. Now I've modified this one. I've taken off the arm and I've cut extraneous bits off this and I've fitted a two pin JST um, because that fits very well um, 
Well, it's next to the 9 volt connection, so it's connected directly to the negative, but the positive jumps over to the 1.5 volt. I'll open this one up and we'll see what chip this one has. Actually, first, we'll just make sure it's non latching. So I'll put the 9 volt battery on there. So you get to see that 0 volts first, and you can see the voltage is moving. So that's non latching. This is a good one. But let's open this up, have a look at the chip, and also have a look at how I've connected this connector. And yes, indeed, this one has the 16 pin chip. So I'm now thinking that the best way to tell whether these are latching or non latching is just from this chip. So this is the non latching. This is the real time voltage display. Um, well, you can't see it very well because I've put hot glue on it, but the negative on this JST two pin goes to the negative connection, the nine volt negative connection, which is common with the 1.5. In fact, you can even see a track running around there, joining them together. And I've just put in a little uh, wire link which hops over the um, 9 volt input connection, which as we know goes to that diode, and it hops over to the 1.5 volt input connection. Right, what about the BT189, which is also a latching type? Um, we can show that like so. You don't get to see the zero volts, it just shows you the voltage. Now that did look like it was changing, but I can assure you it latches. But let's open it up and take a look at the chip in here. I'm expecting a 14 pin chip. And that's what's inside. It's a very neat board, um, but it's got all the same components. The inductor next to the 1.5 volt input, uh, the diode next to the 9 volt input. Where is the 9 volt input? That's the 1.5. No, wait a minute. What's that wire? Where's that going? Oh, that's going uh, to this positive. Yeah, so that's the 1.5 volt positive input goes into the inductor. The 9 volt positive input um, goes to a diode. Now, where's that diode? I can't see the diode. But it's got this same HT30 chip. Let's just check that, actually. Yeah, here we are. So we've got the, where's my pen? The HT30 chip there and this uh, E3 chip there. So it's, again, it's the same circuit, but there is the 14 pin chip, which doesn't have a live constantly changing voltage display. So that seems to be the solution to the mystery of why some of them latch and some don't. The latching ones have this uh, 14 pin chip, maybe it's a bit cheaper and they're moving towards that. Um, the non-latching ones, which are the only ones useful to me, have the 16 pin chip and outwardly you can tell because the latching ones just show a voltage and the non-latching ones briefly show zero volts and then the voltage. Now I think, like I said, I've settled on this BT168 uh, Max as the preferable one because it's very easy to put that connector on there. I don't need to do any internal wiring. So I'll just put the lid back on here and uh, I'll show you how I'm using these. Incidentally, while I was um, soldering this connector in here, I accidentally jabbed the back of the LCD with, uh, I don't know, soldering arm probably, and burnt this little black hole in the reflective back coating so there's a permanent black mark on there now but never mind that won't happen when I modify some more of these things. Uh, so here is a super capacitor which is one of these uh, 2.7 volt 500 farad types. I've put it on one of my PCBs. I've put a couple of flashing LEDs on there just for fun and if I connect this JST to my voltmeter I can see that the voltage on that is uh, 2.61 and falling, uh, partly because the LEDs take about a milliamp each, as I seem to remember. And also, of course, because this uh, battery tester is drawing a current. Remember, on the 1.5 volt input, which this is connected to, um, it goes into that boost converter circuit, so that inevitably takes a little bit of power and I was just talking there to try and ride the time that it would take to go down to 
zero, which it's now done. So that's how I intend to use these things um, on lithium ion or sodium ion uh, battery cells or super caps. So if you want to use um, these battery testers as um, voltmeters, now you may be wanting to use them as battery testers, in which case these things, well, they're sort of okay. Quite frankly, I'd rather have a live display of voltage rather than a snapshot and then a frozen value. To me, that's not as good, even if you're just using it as a battery tester. But if you're using it as a voltmeter, um, then yeah, go for the ones that uh, initially have a zero uh, on the display and then show you the voltage. I just wanted to try and um, discharge this actually with this 12 volt bulb, but it's not discharging it very quickly. That super cap's holding up really quite well and you can see the filament glowing there. Um, yeah, if you want to just use these as uh, voltmeters, then I suggest you go for the 16 pin chip variants. Uh, the ones that briefly show zero volts on the display. And uh, now I'm going to do a completely gratuitous discharging of this supercapacitor into this 12 volt light bulb to see what voltage uh, this battery tester stroke voltmeter cuts out at. In other words, when that buck, uh, boost converter uh, gives up the ghost. Well, the flashing LEDs have become very dim at 1.7 volts. Uh, you can still just see them. Yeah, 1.6 volts. Those are barely visible. And at 1.5 volts, the bulb filament is just on the verge of, uh, well, going cold, in which case its resistance should drop. So this should fall a bit faster now. And uh, now I'll run it from one volt all the way down to the point where the battery tester can no longer operate, which is about half a volt, I believe. I'll just leave the camera running and speed it up. And yeah, we'll see what happens to this thing. Right, we're getting down towards half a volt. It may go a little bit lower than that. And then I think it'll go into uh, <laughs> microcontroller getting very upset mode. And as I remember it, uh, all the segments kind of flicker and go crazy. But let's see how far it goes. Okay, 0.45. Uh, now it's naught volts and flickery segments because I suspect that the microcontroller part of the chip and or LCD driver part of the chip is struggling and uh, I remember seeing it when it gets lower with just a few of the segment <laughs> segments lit up. But I mean, now that we're here, I don't know if anyone's still watching, <laughs> but if you are, yeah, this is what happens. It gets cross at about 0.4 volts. Look at that. Anyway, that's kind of it. So cheerio.